order to subscribe for my channel please click here or click here please like share and comments on my videos and channel thank you duration types while creating the SLA definitions for your SLA you can mention the different types of duration you have two types of duration one is user specified duration another one is relative duration in user specified duration you can mention the particular length of time as an example eight hours and in relative duration you can mention something like next business day Basically, these duration types define the length of time within which a task must be completed before the SLA is breached. So in user specified duration, you will have an option to mention the duration of the time. It might be 4 hours, 8 hours, 5 minutes. But in a relative duration, you have some more options where you can mention if you want to calculate the time as per the next business day or end of next business day or next business day by 4 p.m. or breach on due date. Let me show you in my personal developer instance. This is the SLA definition and you have this particular field where you can select the different types of duration. If I will click this button, here you will see some options like user specified duration. If I select user specified duration, it will automatically show me the duration field where I can mention the duration of this SLA. It can be five minutes, eight hours, four hours, as per the requirement you have from your customer. But for example, your customer says that incident is created and I really want if it's a P1, and it's really a high, high urgent case or high urgent incident. In that case, that SLA should run till next business day. That means if incident is created, you can mention the relative duration like two business days by 4 p.m. That means it will calculate today and tomorrow, but by 4 p.m. And then you have three business days by 4 p.m. If you want to select the breach on due date, that means the task which you are creating. And if you have any SLA, then you can just mention select the duration type as breach on due date. In that case, your task will continue to run the SLA till that particular time. And it will only be breached if you're not able to complete the task by due date. And that's how you select relative duration. Schedule source. You can also mention the schedule source while creating the SLA definition for your SLA. When you mention the duration, you also need to mention then what kind of schedule your SLA will follow. Now, there are different schedules which your SLA can follow. The first option in a schedule source we have is no schedule. That means you do not want any schedule to be followed for your SLA. And in that case, your SLA will calculate based on 24 by 7 schedule. And no schedule is mostly selected when your team works 24 by 7. You have incidents and incidents are being assigned to different groups and if all the teams are working 24 by 7 in all part of the world or maybe from any one location as well it doesn't matter but the matter what matters is that they should work 24 by 7 and that's how you can utilize no schedule because that will run 24 by 7 so even if you have mentioned eight hours of duration for your SLA, that means if ticket comes even at the midnight, the SLA will still run and that will still get gets breached even in the night.
because you have not mentioned any kind of schedule for it. Now, it might happen that you have different teams where they work in different shift and you have multiple groups like that. In that case, you have to select some schedules because no schedule will not work in this particular situation. So the another, another option we have is SLA definition. When you select SLA definition, it automatically shows you a new field that is schedule on SLA definition form. Now, this schedule is basically referencing the schedule table. And there are a lot of schedules which you can create in a schedule table. Maybe it's a time from 9 to 5 p.m., maybe 8 to 5 weekdays, 9 to 5 weekdays, or maybe 9 to 5 excluding holidays. Those kind of schedules you can create in this table. And when you will refer that particular schedule in the schedule field, your complete SLA will follow that schedule. For example, you have a schedule called 9 to 5 weekdays. That means you do not work on weekends and you do not work after 5 p.m. and before 9 a.m. And when you have selected 8 hours of duration, in that case, if your ticket is coming after 6 p.m., for example, so you are working 9 to 6, and your incident is coming after 6 p.m. In that case, that SLA will not be calculated. It will not attach any SLA. It will be at a pause status, basically. Now, when you will come on Monday and at 9 a.m., that SLA will automatically be attached to the task. And the reason behind it, because you have mentioned and a schedule basically for that particular SLA. And that's how SLA definition works. The third option we have is task table field. That means if you have any schedule mentioned in one of your task table, you can also utilize that. So if you have any table where you have or you are already selecting the schedules for different things, in that case, you can select that field as well, which will be referring to the same schedule table. And it can be any table you want. And it depends as per the table you select. So let's take a look how exactly you select schedule source in your personal developer instance. This is my personal developer instance and this is the field which defines the schedule source for your SLA definition. The first option we have is no schedule. It will automatically follow this one but it will run 24 by 7. But when I have SLA definition selected it will automatically show this field and I can select any duration I want. Now these are the schedules I have in my personal developer instance. I will close this. And the third option we have is incident field. That means it is automatically giving you that option that you can select the task table field. Let's see if if I have any other table as well, maybe idea. Now you can see it got changed automatically because now it become idea field. So it will automatically change the schedule source option. Basically this option will keep on changing as per the table you are selecting in this particular field. So that's how you can create your SLA definition with the help of schedule source. So schedule source is a really important configuration or I would say it's a really important feature of your SLA in ServiceNow.
because your clients or your customers might come to you that to create SLAs on the basis of the team's work timings. And I think that's a basic ask right now in ITSM world or maybe in this ITIL world. Because you have different teams in different part of the worlds, but they don't work at the same time. Or they have different shifts as well. And that's how you can create the SLA definition with the help of duration type and schedule source. Let's take a look at how duration and schedule works together and how exactly they calculate the timings. Duration and schedule. Let's take an example in which you will mention the SLA definition as 24 hours. That means you are creating the user specified duration that is 24 hours and you are selecting the schedule that is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. In this case, let's take an example that an incident was created at 9 a.m. on the very first day. So we will take this example with three days, day one, day two, day three. On the very first day, as I mentioned, the ticket was created at 9 a.m. That means SLA will start, but it will pause at 5 p.m. Because after 5 p.m., SLA will not continue to work. And the reason behind it, because the schedule is mentioned till 5 p.m. Now, how exactly it will calculate in the next 16 hours? So that will be the follow up day. In that case, when you come again in the morning at 9 a.m., then next eight hours will run. In that case, it will calculate the next eight hours and then it will complete 16 hours. So as of now, you have not breezed the SLA. And even it, it can be any kind of SLA, even if it's a response or resolution. So even if you are not resolving the incident, if you're not responding on the incident, you are still safe. You have not breached the SLA because the SLA time is 24 hours. So you still have eight hours more. And how that will be calculated? That will be calculated very next day. And that is the third day you have. And that SLA will again start at 9 a.m. in the morning and this time you just have the time till 5 p.m. So if you will not be able to respond, if it's a response SLA, or if you'll not be able to resolve as per the conditions you have mentioned in your SLA definition, in that case, SLA will be breached. So if you are acknowledging the incident after 5 p.m., it's again breached. And if you are responding or whatever activity which you were supposed to do before 5 p.m., if you are doing it, then it is not breached. But if you are doing that activity after 5 p.m. and none of the conditions are matching as per the SLA definition you have created, in that case, this whole incident and the task will be breached. So that's how your duration and schedule works together. Time zone. Time zone is an important factor for your SLA. You can specify the geographical time zone that is used for scheduled calculation. There are different type of time zones configurations you can select while creating the SLA definitions. And those are Caller's time zone. When you will select this option, in that case, the time zone will be selected for the caller's time zone. So whatever user is selected in the caller's field, in that case, system will select that particular time zone. And if caller's time zone is not selected, then system time zone will be used. Then we have SLA definition time zone. Now, when you select this option, in this case, you will get another field where you can select the time zone. 
and what time zone you want to follow for this particular SLA definition or whatever SLA definition you are creating. Then you have CI location time zone. While creating incident, while creating different tasks, if you have configuration item, in that case, whatever location your CI is, that time zone will be followed. Then we have task location time zone. So whatever task you have, if there's a location field over there, that time zone will be followed. And then we have callers location time zone. In that case, whatever location caller has specified, that time zone will be followed. For example, if you have mentioned the location as India, that means IST will be followed. If you have mentioned your location somewhere in US, then that time zone will be followed. So the difference between the caller's time zone and caller's location time zone is that caller's time zone is something which caller's has itself specified that particular time zone, regardless of the location he is from. And it can happen, right? Any user can put their time zone as per the user preference. But if you select the last option, that is caller's local location time zone, in that case, whatever location caller has selected, that time zone will be followed. As an example, if you have a schedule of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., but you have selected the time zone as IST, and your ticket comes in another time zone, in that case, the SLA will calculate the duration as per the time zone you have selected. So it might happen the 9 a.m. can be there in, in some other part of the world. But it will still not calculate it because you have mentioned the time zone. And whatever time zone you have selected, as per the options you have, you have here, that's how your SLA will calculate that particular SLA duration. You can select the time zone when you change the schedule source as SLA definition. When you mention the SLA definition, you can see it says time zone source. You can select any time zone you want, any schedule basically. I have selected Americas here and here I can select the time zone source. You can see I have callers time zone. SLA definition, CIA location, task C location, time zone, and then callers location, time zone. So these are the options which you can select. Now, in ServiceNow, you definitely have an opportunity to customize these options, but in order to do that, you have to do a scripting. You have to change a lot of options, maybe some UI macros, scripting and all that's well that's how if you want to add some other conditions which is not mentioned out of the box that's how you can manage right here and those options can be visible if you are changing those options with the help of the scripting but most of the use cases can be satisfied or can be uh, fulfilled with out of the box functionality you have from ServiceNow please continue to watch the whole series for SLA to understand end-to-end -end SLA configuration. Thanks for watching my video. Have a great day.